Mr. Jelly by Roger Hargraves. Poor Mr. Jelly was frightened of everything and anything. At the slightest little thing, he could quiver and tremble and shake and turn to jelly. So it's not really surprising that to by to find that Mr. Jerry lives as far far away as from everybody that he can find at the middle of a wood miles and miles from everywhere anywhere. Anyways, this story begins one morning when Mr. Jelly was asleep. It was a beautiful autumn morning. The sun was shining and leaves on the trees had turned to a glorious red and orange. And the wind stored gently in the treetops. A single leaf fell gently from the tree right outside Mr. Jelly's house and quietly brushed against his bedroom window as it fell. Mr. Jelly woke with a start. Oh, 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 what's that terrible noise? What's that terrible noise? Oh, oh, good heavens, uh, the house is falling down. It's an earthquake. The end of the world. It's the end of the world. <laughs> and he hid under the bedclothes, trembling with fright. After an hour, by the time he realized that his house wasn't falling down and there wasn't an earthquake, earthquake, and the world wasn't coming to an end. Mrs. Jelly peeked out from under the bedclothes. Whew, he said, thank goodness for that. And he got up and went downstairs to make his breakfast. Mrs. Jelly poured some cornflakes out of a packet and into a bowl. Then he poured some milk on, onto the cornflakes. Then he went to the cup bed to get some sugar. Crackle, crackle, went pop, pop. Went the cornflakes and the milk. <gasps> oh, the goose gooses! cried Mr. Jelly, diving under the kitchen table. <sighs> I have guns! It's war! Of course it wasn't. And of course, Mr. Jelly extremely came out from the from under the table and ate all of his cornflakes. After breakfast, Mr. Jelly thought that he, he, he could go for a walk. He was walking through the woods which surrounded his house when a worm popped, popped his head out of the ground. Morning, said the worm, cheerfully to Miss Jelly. Miss Jelly jumped out of his skin. What? What? Who's oh, there? Then he saw the worm. Oh, good heavens! It's a snake! Oh, I'm very, I'm mad in a snake! Oh, I'm gonna be eaten alive! And he jumped into a tree. What a performance! Comfort the war. And went back to his hole. After an hour, Mrs. Jelly felt brave enough to climb down from the tree and continue his walk. Eventually, he came out of the, si the other side of a wood and into a field. Mrs. Jelly gazed nervously around. It was an endy field, or was it? In the long grass in the middle of the field, unseen by Mr. Jelly, there was a tramp enjoying a sleep in the autumn sunshine. <sighs> Mr. Jelly picked his way cautiously through the grass. A tramp, fast asleep, snored. Oh, oh, what was that? shrieked Mr. Jelly. Oh, it's a lion! I heard a growl! Oh, goodness gracious, oh dear! A lion! A huge lion! A huge lion with enormous sharp teeth! A huge enormous lion with sharp teeth! It's gonna bite me in two! A huge lion with enormous sharp teeth! It's gonna bite me in two! A huge lion with enormous sharp teeth! It's gonna bite me in two! Two of nothing! Oh, 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 o
Oh dear, said the tramp, for he was a kindly chap. Oh deary me. And he picked up Mr. Jelly and placed him gently in the palm of his hand. Mr. Jelly came up to him and sat up rubbing his eyes. They saw a trance face looking at him. Oh, disaster, he screamed. Oh, calamity, it's a giant and ogre. Oh, God, this guy's going to have me for breakfast. Oh. My, my, said the tramp gently. You'll know this little fellow. No, it's a little champ, are you? What is your name? It's, 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 Mr. Mr. Jelly. Mr. Jelly. Scammer, Mr. Jelly. I used to be nervous like you, said the tramp, but I learned how not to be. Would you like me to tell you the secret? Mr. Cover, Miss Jelly, covered and shocked and said, Yes, yes, please. It's very simple, continued the tramp. All you had to do is to cut up the ten, and you'll find what's What's that? Whatever frightens you, is frightening you, isn't quite so frightening after all. Then he, then he said, Mrs. Jelly, gently, down the grass. Now remember, said the tramp, he said to Mr. Jelly, count to ten. And he went off. Mr. Jelly thought that would be a good idea, they went, went home. Back, back across the field he went, back through the woods he went. He was, walking, he was walking through the woods when he stopped on a little twig. Snap! Miss Jelly, Miss Jelly jumped twice as high in terror. Oh, oh, that! That terrible stomach noise! Oh, it's a train! Oh, it down! It's gonna crush me to pieces! Oh, God, me! Is that a crocodile? Hiding behind the bushes, stab his teeth! What is that? It's, 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 it's. Then he stopped. He took a deep breath. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And what he saw, uh, what was going snap, was a twig. A silly old trick. Ooh, he said. A terrible snap to almost reach his house when a leaf drifted gently down. Mr. Jelly has almost reached his house when a leaf stirred gently lift gently down from the tree on top. Help! Help! Please! Murder! He screamed. Oh, I've been kidnapped! Oh, it's rifles! I have guns! They're going to, going to, going to... Then he stopped. He took a deep breath. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten! And what he saw was falling on him was only a leaf, nothing but a leaf, a silly red leaf. It works, he said out loud in amazement. And you know, it did work. After that moment, Mrs. Jelly became a changed man. Well, you can see that he, you can see that by looking at him, can you? He, and he never. Shrieks, or shouts, or screams, or quivers, or shakes, or trembles anymore. And he never hides under the bedclothes anymore. Well, not very often, anyway. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, nine, ten.